Cooler Master's new Master Set MS120 sets you up with a gaming keyboard and mouse for just $89.99. The keyboard features mem mechanical switches, rubber dome hybrids with a clicky mechanical feel, per-key RGB backlighting, and nine preset LED modes. The mouse has durable Omron switches, a 3500 DPI PixArt optical sensor, and matching RGB lighting. Click the link in the description for more information. What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. I have gotten a lot of new CPUs this year in 2017. Uh, when AMD sent over their first Ryzen processors, they had like a wooden box and I did an unboxing of that. And then they sent over the Threadripper and they had like these two massive boxes and I did an unboxing of that. So now that Intel is releasing the high end of their CPU lineup, the Skylake X CPUs that they promised us back at the beginning of June, I figured I owe it to them to do an unboxing as well. So uh, let's get started. Okay. See, we have uh, two black boxes here. One says 16 uh, for the 16 core 7960X and 18, which I have to assume is for the 18 core uh, 7980XE, the Extreme Edition. It's of course, the old school core stat packaging. And inside, boom, there's the 18 core. and the 16 core. Uh, but I guess that's pretty much all there is to it. Thanks for watching, guys. Okay, I'll be honest. Um, I, I did think it was kind of funny, the difference between the Intel packaging and the AMD packaging. I do not care how well my 16 core and 18 core processors are actually packaged. And unboxings are, you know, they're fun, but they don't really matter when it comes to performance. So I was getting ready to test these and I started to unbox this right here, uh, which happens coincidentally to show up at the same time, the ROG Rampage 6 Extreme R6E, uh, which is the top end of the X299 chipset LGA2066 motherboards from Asus. So I started to get this out of the box so I could test these processors. And I realized, you know, this is kind of a, a unique experience. It's a $650 motherboard. The only other motherboards available right now, uh, the, high, the most expensive one is 500 bucks 650 for this one and it's currently available for pre-order at least as of the filming of this video uh, from B&H so I figured since I got my unboxing shirt on anyway why don't I give you guys the experience of unboxing the most expensive x299 motherboard that's currently available and show you what actually you get in the package what gives Asus the audacity to think they can charge $650 for this thing so the first thing when you open the box is you actually get this extra fold-out flap. Asus has been doing this recently with their motherboards and it says welcome to the Republic since you are now uh, joining a, a distinct new government uh, which is run by Asus. They have an island somewhere I'm told. I don't really know the details but I, I, I've, I, from what I understand if I get my Thetan levels up enough then I actually get to visit or something like that. Um, beyond that, we got the motherboard, of course. It's in a little uh, cardboard packaging, and I'm actually gonna come back to that in just a moment. Other than that, we have uh, a set of stickers, do not disturb, ROG, choice of gamers, etc. They have sort of a soft metallic sheen to them, which is very pleasant to the eye. So put those up on the door of your bedroom so that your parents know not to bother you, I guess is the point of those. Uh, inside we have accessories, and this hopefully is where, you know, you're gonna see a lot of added value when it comes to this type of motherboard. Now, all these are in plastic packaging, so give me a minute and I'm gonna take it all out. All right, here's all the accessories and uh, starting off with this small pile right here, these are basically small screws that you're gonna use to attach things like M.2 drives uh, and extra pieces that might attach in extra places. You also got a little uh, front panel connector header adapter right there. Uh, for documentation, you have several bits of that. Cable mod, cables, 20% uh, uh, off coupon. RG cable stickers, you can add those to your SATA cables so you can keep track of them. Uh, some warranty information. An ROG case badge, which is just the ROG eye that uh, looks kind of cool. And, and uh, actually, as case badges goes, that, that, that one's actually uh, not too bad at all. And then, of course, the standard ROG user's guide. 
Now, other than that, you have all this stuff here, starting with this little box, which is basically just your USB driver and utilities, and they put it in here just so it's a little bit tougher to lose, um, because it is kind of a nice, small USB brush metal finish thing, and much better than having a uh, driver disc, I will say. Six SATA cables, pretty standard. The rest of the cables here are all uh, specialized to what, some degree or another. So for example, you got some temperature sensors uh, that you can connect to different reading points on the board and uh, position on your case or in your system where you want them to. This is the adapter cable for this unit right here, which is the fan extension card. Allows you to add, allows you to add a bunch more addressable PWM controllable fan headers to the to your motherboard uh, which is very nice an additional four right there and then a connection point for the motherboard there's also additional uh, uh temperature read points on there requires a molex power input and uh, the cable for that you have a couple led cables uh one is for standard leds the four pin that you've probably seen before rgb and the uh, voltage and then of course you have uh, the new type of LEDs, the addressable digital LEDs, a connection point for those on this motherboard. Uh, there's actually only three plugs on the board, so this one is has one blocked off so you don't get this cable mixed up. You do need to buy digital addressable LEDs of a special variety to connect to those so that it's uh, not compatible, but you do have both types of headers on the board so you can use either one. This is the DIM.2 uh, card, which is a riser card that has two M.2 slots on it, one on each side. It goes into an extra slot that's next to the memory. I'll show you that in just a second so I'll keep that one out. All right from what I can deduce this is a DIM.2 fan mount so you can add a fan like an active fan or something to, and mount it to your DIM.2 slot that's interesting and new haven't tried it out before. Uh, it looks like they have a couple different VGA brackets uh, the little holders and actually this one has a ROG logo on it and a little bit of, uh, of etching on the side it's kind of cool so uh, if you're having problems with GPU sag those should help you out you get three SLI bridges um, you get a three-way you get a double spaced two-way and you get a four-way so they must not have chatted with NVIDIA about the lack of support for three-way and four-way SLI recently but you do get a nice rigid bra rigid black bracket black finish NVIDIA SLI logo ROG bridge right there not quite as fancy as the ones that you buy from them that have the LED lights on them, but there you go. Finally, a couple antenna because you do have multiple uh, Wi-Fi radios on this device, 802.11ac. And then of course, that cup holder. It's, it's really nice. It's not a cup holder. It's a, what do you call those? Anyway, I'm just gonna call it a pog. I like pogs. And here's the motherboard itself. This was actually where I got into when I decided that I should do uh, this unboxing video. So by the way, let me know guys if I, if this was a good idea or not because I, I kind of debated about it in my head for a little bit. I was like, is this something that people would even be interested in? But I can only do it like before I actually use the board. Once the board gets set up and everything, um, there's kind of a lot less point to doing this because it's gotta be fresh. Uh, it's got to still have all the plastic on it like like this board still has so um, the first thing you guys might be able to see well not really but from your from that side at least is it's got a fixed uh, IO shield on the back so I'm gonna peel that off of there uh, and that is pretty nice I must say IO shields can be a pain in the butt especially if you forget them um, so the fixed one is, is sort of a new trend that's we've seen once or twice before in the Zenith, for example, also from Asus. Um, but let me just get some of this here plastic off. Now you might notice a lot of what looks like silver finish on the top here, but um, this actually has those digital LEDs going along the edge. And I will hopefully have this all set up fairly soon, so I can hopefully also give you guys some footage of that. But um, the LEDs kind of shoot across here, uh, and they look really cool. And there's actually some, um, some like texture underneath there that you can't see unless the lights are actually on, which also looks pretty, pretty kind of unique and cool. I mean, granted, completely an aesthetic feature, does nothing for the performance of the board. So uh, for anyone who hates that, you know, I don't, I, I, I see where you're coming from, but a lot of people uh, who are investing in a board like this are uh, planning to build a system that they want to make look really good as well as perform really good. So RGB LEDs have People, people keep buying them, so the manufacturers are going to keep making stuff with them as long as people keep buying them. I think I've gotten all the plastic parts off of this, I, I think. 
All right, so there is the board proper, and um, as you might be able to tell, quad channel memory, LGA 2066 socket right there, LEDs, again, which I hope you can see. I don't even know what it all lights up right now, but you, you guys probably know better than I do right now because I'm hopefully showing you uh, the how some of the LEDs look. Uh, massive power delivery at the top, uh, a heat sink that actually looks like it's built for airflow. Yeah, this heat sink actually looks like it was built for airflow. They put some slashes through there, so it's not just a massive block, so it should do a pretty, we would imagine, would do a better job of heat dissipation due to that. Uh, eight plus four on the power delivery up here. There's a corner that has a significant amount of control points and connection points for higher end overclocking features, such as, I believe this is the ability to turn off individual PCI Express lanes. So if you're doing multiple GPUs, uh, or if you have a water-cooled setup where you can't physically remove them, uh, that gives you the access to that. Uh, start power and reset buttons, as well as a clear, uh, clear CMOS and a safe boot. Uh, a retry, sorry, this is a retry and a safe boot button. That's for a higher end overclocking. Uh, There's a standard RGB header up here in the corner as well as a couple uh, four pin PWM uh, fan headers. And then you've got 24 pin. There is the special new connector for USB 3.1 Gen 2, uh, which is really nice to have. There's only one of them on here. I was kind of hoping they might, they might throw two on there, but uh, what? Yeah, that's what you get. Uh, you also get another four pin fan header, USB 3.0 here, as well as over here. And then bottom right can corner, typical stuff, front panel connectors, uh, more connection points. There's fan, fan, fan. I believe this is a, a water pump header right here. Uh, this is a water pump plus two right here as well. A couple more fan headers. Uh, this is the actual digital uh, LED connection right here. So there's, it's, it's a three pin. There's one uh, pin that's spaced out. And then there's again, another uh, standard RGB header that's down here as well. So this one's addressable, can do some cool effects, but you need a special addressable digital LEDs. Uh, another fan header, there's tons of them on this board. Uh, a little supplemental power for uh, setting up multi-GPU configurations, TPM front panel header, uh, and then I don't know if I showed you this, but on the side, there's LEDs that kind of run down the edge here along the side, and those are kind of tucked in between the edge of the motherboard and the uh, sort of partial back plate that's here on the back that has the ROG logo on it, um, which is a unique design. Um, we've seen full back plates with a lot of uh, ASUS boards recently, but uh, they went for this sort of half design. I, I kind of like it. It's cool. And finally for I.O., uh, what, what really is the nice things to speak of here would be 10 gigabit Ethernet, uh, super speed USB 3.1 Gen 2. I'm not sure if they, they have 3.2 Gen 1 on here yet. Not positive if that's a thing or not. Uh, but they've got gold-plated connectors here for the I.O. and these also have LEDs uh, that, that rest inside them. So you can actually see when the LEDs light up which I.O. Uh, you want to plug into for like speakers or microphone or that kind of thing. Uh, externally mounted cleared CMOS as well as uh, BIOS reset buttons. So that's very, very handy to have as well. I guess lastly, let me pop in the, the DIM.2 here. So with the DIM.2 in, it gives you two more M.2 slots up here. Uh, there's an M.2 right here, and then it's also a U.2 connection point right there. So tons of connectivity just default natively for uh, high speed NVMe SSDs. And that's really kind of what you're probably gonna be interested in. Oh, also EATX, did I mention that? It's an EATX, the, the extra wide form factor, giving you additional space uh, for activities. So there you go, guys. This has been a quick unboxing and a quick overview. Real quick before I go, Tiny Tom Logan uh, over at OC3D has actually done a much more in-depth uh, review of this motherboard where he actually tests it and stuff like that. So highly recommend checking that out if you're interested in a little bit more on this motherboard than my uh, granted kind of lightweight unboxing and quick overview of features that I've given you guys right now. So I'll post a link to that in the description. Check it out if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching this video guys and again let me know if unboxings are worth it at all to you because I'm still doing them here and there. I'm trying to make them only products that are a little bit more unique or have something special about them. But that's all I have the time for today. I'm gonna actually get started testing these uh, processors, but that video is probably gonna go up before this one, so you've probably already seen it. Anyway, I'm, I'm very confused. Um, time travel is difficult. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.